if uh, look, look. really i'm still setting up <laughs> I know. It's, uh, let's have a little look then. Let's... Who's going to be joining us today? Right, let's just definitely check where we're check we're all working. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check, check for at least another 30 seconds, please, <laughs> and, and then we'll be good. <coughs> definitely. Um, I think we're good. Uh, let's wait for a few people to join. Um, let's have a little look. Yeah, I think we're live, Dave. I think we're good. I'm yeah, just... there we go. Let me just check connection issues. Um, I don't know what the stress is about. I'm, I'm here. I'm live. I'm on time. <laughs> Definitely haven't just ran through at the last possible second. That, that's very true. Very true. Johnny um, Dyer. Yeah, who's who's joining us then? If you are joining us, as always, um, do comment uh, just to let us know who is here. David Squire, strong silent type. Just a thumbs up. <laughs> Anthony, how you doing? Uh, Marky V, bonjour. I hope all is well. Um, Anthony, great stuff. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us today. We. Um, is it, Couple of weeks till Christmas, and uh, we, we got uh, one planned in for next week, which was, as you can imagine, specifically around mm -hmm. um, potential, uh, you know, merriment and Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this week we wanted to to kind of continue really the theme from last week. Now, last week um, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we had Tori James here mm. um, on the sofa. Just by there. Um, turn around a little bit. But yeah, we were discussing, um, you know, her journey and, uh, you know, the Everest summit that she did, as well as all the other stuff and family and adventures and also some of the other, you know, big stuff that she's been a part of. And it kind of got the theme going because, as you know, we're, we're doing um, our Yeti Yuletide Challenge at the moment, which is, yeah, um, which is going well, Dave, isn't it? Yeah, it's the annual uh, Put the Yetis Through Hell <laughs> um for charity fundraising it's actually going really good i'm really enjoying it i'll be yeah. honest with you i think it's exactly what i needed to give myself a kick up the uh proverbials the proverbial because um we've been doing uh what's what's it called step up to the summit step up to your summit yeah well the, the, Rosie's, that's gonna, what, Rosie's gonna have my balls gonna kill us for right? a title <laughs> but uh, ultimately yeah that's, that's what this is about because obviously we want to assist yourselves as well um uh, and to talk about the things that you know you can do in preparation for your trips for next year mm -hmm. um because we know december is kind of generally the kind of uh mentally you kind of try and wind down don't you you have a bit of a chill couple of weeks and then you're into 2023 that's uh, 2024 wow i know it, it's, it's just been that year <laughs> <laughs> um and, and we were thinking well why don't we just start now why not why not right you could be imagine imagine going into january and already into it so yeah we were kind of discussing especially linking it to, to kind of what we are doing at the moment. You know, we're obviously we're in the gym most days. Um, well, some of us are in the gym most days. Not necessarily. Well, <laughs> All I've, of us, I've not, been not, in not, a, certainly not me. I've been in the gym um, every day. Um, I've been trying to get Rosie uh, motivated enough so she can come in and just really yeah, just start the battle we need. But um, can she hear me? She's mm -hmm. at her desk. Um, but, yeah. No, we've been uh, – we've been. I think we're going to step it up now. I think – I think we, we've let them take the spotlight for a little while, and now and now we're, now the now the boys are back in pain. We still done we still done five six thousand steps, but yeah. yeah so yeah. essentially, we're, we're on on the, the stepmaster or stairmaster, um, and we're uh, aiming to uh, essentially do as many steps as it would take to, to climb that Everest. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, in, in reality, a bit different, it, right? But it, it's you know, to, turns to out it's a lot. It is a lot. It's more than your average ten thousand a day recommendation. <laughs> it is. Um, um, we put, <clears throat> as you can see across the bottom of the screen. I know normally we put, uh, you know, comment with your questions. There's other things, um, but there's the the link um, for stepping up to the summit, um, which is uh, donations for Brecken Mountain Rescue. And Brecken Mountain Rescue are, you know, a charity we've been kind of working with the last couple of years now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, definitely a, a charity that sits very close to our hearts, and uh, obviously close geographically as well but they do cover a massive area and, and obviously a lot of our ever trekkers are in um you know brecon beacons banner brecon um you know and and the the larger area because it doesn't just cover that area it's actually like more towards north and they cover a little bit of south wales as well so a lot of ever trekkers are out there doing their training for the bigger stuff and um you know they are um essentially building the, their new headquarters so all the cash is kind of going towards that, really. So, yeah, um, you know, we, we um, always a little plug for them. So definitely we've got the link yeah. at the bottom. Also as well, 
Um, I think Sophie has put the link in the comments as is well. Is Sophie on the calls today? She is. She's on the phone. She's one of our newest newest yetis. Yeah, we haven't. Uh, I don't know if we've introduced. Um, we haven't. We haven't. Uh, we'll have to do a. We'll have to do a, a live and an intro and maybe. Uh, yeah. I, I actually think I, I can. I can say with confidence that Sophie's really looking forward to coming on the live <laughs> and telling us all about herself. And um, actually, can we get wow. a thumbs up or maybe a hashtag Sophie if you want to meet her? And also Helen as well. Helen's yes, another one. We have. We've um, but I can't. Yetis. It's harder to torment Helen because she's. Not, uh, might not be watching right now, but that's true. That's when she true. does the questions, we'll torment her too. But um, but yeah. So what do we think we're going to talk about today, Anne? Because what's been on our minds? What's been forced <sighs> upon us? No, I, I think essentially with with, with training, um, you know, really important part of your preparation, isn't it? And um, it's something that we've. I, I kind of feel like the last six months we've we've certainly we discussed it a little bit, but we've been focusing on other things, and we you know, we talked a lot about equipment about the altitude, you know, a lot about mindset. So I wanted to go back to the basics today. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of you have, have been to high altitude. You, you, you're into your trekking anyway. Um, you know, you're into the outdoors. So you, you're probably doing all of this anyway. But we thought, you know, sometimes it might be, just be one thing that you're not doing that could help, that could make the difference on your next trip. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to focus on and go back to the basics today in terms of what things can you do both in the gym and outside of the gym, whether that's at home or, you know, out and about uh, walking. Um, so we wanted to go through some specifics, really, in terms of, OK, if you're going to do leg exercises, let's talk about what ones. Mm. Maybe. And, and, and also as well, this is an open forum. And, um, you know, people watching today, they'll, they'll you know, they, they'll throw a comment or a question. Uh, and, and, and it's always great if, if you want to answer that question as well, because um, there's a collective knowledge here. So any anything that works for you. When, you know, when we're talking about specific things, throw it in the comments. Yeah. It'd be great to hear about what you're doing as well. That's what what's working well. Uh, maybe if you've been on a couple of trips with us, what's worked well for you as well in terms of maybe is it is it you know, are you all in the you in the gym a lot or are you just someone that likes to be out and about and you know you're um you know you, that's that works for you or are you someone that needs to do loads of like single leg movements, you know, a lot of weight stuff um you know wearing a weight pack you know what works for you i'm not always keen to see what people are actually doing uh, when we're talking about all the different stuff or you just out there walking yeah it's always interesting isn't it yeah no i mean i think as well one other thing that's interesting which i particularly have had a um a lot of thinking time about it is as well if you're sort of nursing an, uh, an issue yeah you know what specific training tips that you found that will help in that regard I think one of the biggest things that I've struggled with um, since hurting my knee in 2021 was descents. Yeah. They became so much more difficult um, and so much slower. And one of the things that I did, which really, really helped was yeah. quad exercises. Okay. So lots of like single leg movements, yeah. lots of body weight exercises, like quad, um, squats and things like that. Yeah. Um, and also the, the, the leg extender, you know, in the gym. So these, so let's talk, let's, let's, let's split this up then in terms of, like in the gym, mm -hmm. you're strengthening your quads. Yeah. What would you focus on specific exercises? So a little routine that I developed before I went to Tupcal. Yeah. First thing I would do is just warm up on the Stairmaster. Okay. Just five minutes on the Stairmaster is a really good warm up for me because it gets, it kind of works all your legs, but particularly the quads. Yeah. Um, and if I want to do more on my quads, what I'll find, find is that, um, you know, don't hold on to the okay. thing to take your body weight just five minutes you can do That's that hard quite. after half hour i could tell you yeah <laughs> last <laughs> night i was holding on five minutes is doable <laughs> though after then um go back and do um some squats okay so yeah, yeah, yeah. usually i just do like 10 sets of 10 because it's nice. quite quick to do 10 squats it doesn't take that long yeah and you can have a minute or two in between from there go to the um the single like leg extender okay yeah, yeah. um but what i found was and this was the key that i did was you can fit both legs and you see people using both legs yeah i do a single leg at a time 10 on one leg oh, 10 on another so i okay. so you have to like lower the weight because you're not lifting with both legs <laughs> i was gonna say uh yeah and, and any advice here by the way um is uh, not, do not try this at home not pt uh, <laughs> not trained <laughs> this is just uh, we're just talking about what we do and and if you want to try it go for it yeah um be, be happy to share <laughs> yeah it does work i'm telling yeah. you because if you've got like a leg issue one of yeah. the things that i found constantly is yeah. your stronger leg will overcompensate for your weakest leg mm -hmm. so if you were doing double leg extensions if you were to like put like a power o meter on that you will find that your strongest leg which is my right leg 
would be yeah. doing the majority of the lifting and my left legs is there to help yeah where if you lower the weight and do an individual leg raise obviously yeah. you're getting 100 percent of the uh of the benefit in, say, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. each leg yeah, I like that. so that's how i uh strengthen my quads and actually coming okay. down tupcal in the summer conditions so very scree like very rocky yeah. and loose stone i was like a mountain goat i didn't even slip once and it was nothing that's and true I, actually you didn't and yeah, i realized that the best thing I could, you can do to stop yourself falling over is not in in like summer conditions with scree yeah. is to strengthen your quads so you're a bit more like it gives uh, you so much agile. more stability okay and nice. also I, I, I like to think of them as micro slips right if you have a little <laughs> mic, if you have a little slides mic, are fine yeah if you have a little micro slip and you haven't got strong legs that yeah. talks up through your knee yeah and then before you know it you start you, you take the weight off the foot and then you slide if you're strong those yeah. little micro slips your quads hold you hold you firm it, it is true isn't it and, and and thanks for your comments as well everyone uh, marky v annapurna last year and went back to ebc this year and i love your training regime as well just had no time so decided to wing it uh, <laughs> love it, Marky V. Uh, like like shows some amount of experience. I like, right there. I like your style, Mark. I um, like your style. Yeah, I, I, uh, from, from our practice, not the only one, mate. And and it does it goes to show, doesn't it? And I know we're talking about training today. And hey, look, uh, I'm not saying, Mark, that's that's a hundred percent what you should do. <laughs> but um, uh, I'd be saying if I haven't done that once or twice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like you every know. Glencoe challenge, I just want <laughs> you. It'd be fine. Well, you're, you're aching for a week after. That's that's <laughs> that's the difference. The first one me and um, you did. Yeah. I don't remember doing any training, but I don't think we were that unfit. We that, we, we exactly. just picked, we both picked up unique injuries. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Mark is on, on a good point there in terms of and, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but could, because you were already in a good level of fitness, you essentially didn't need to do that much, which is great. Um, you know, something we do say that, that, that the more you can do the easier it can be when mm -hmm. you're on a trip. And, you know, we do get a lot of people and, and, and we, I've been on, well, we've been on Killy with, with one of our good friends, James, who did zero training mm. um, before taking on Killy and struggled the whole way, but he, he did the I, summit and fair do story. I actually think he did like anti-training. So I think in the weeks leading up to the hike, he actively, <laughs> he he actively sought to make himself less fit. Uh, was it three weeks in Vegas? Three I weeks in before, Vegas, yeah. Um, is not good yeah. um, prep mentally or physically yeah. for the, uh, the turmoil of hiking at high well, altitude. A bit of a gamble to do that, really. Isn't but, um, but yeah, it, I mean, I wouldn't do it. You missed, uh, that, you missed that one, did you? I said it was a bit of a gamble doing that. Uh, okay. Do you know what? <laughs> oh, Dave. It was so natural, like that. I didn't even pick up on it. That's how well they're coming in, mate. Um, I know. Maybe I need to be a bit more like obvious with these things. Yeah. So you know. And uh, so you know, it's not like you know <laughs> silence. You know? No, I think all you do is a little wink and a nudge. And like, <laughs> okay, um, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. Sticking <laughs> with the the legs at the yes. minute because yeah. the legs have been the most important thing for me because yeah. you know I don't climb the mountains using my upper body. Yeah. And although I'd love to be able to show off and do twenty pull ups of a morn, um, <laughs> it is mainly the legs and core that get me up and down the hills. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've started doing, which are really big, yeah. um, is now. After about a couple of days of trekking, I don't know about you, right? But sometimes I get like tight groin or something like that. Or yeah, yeah. It de again, depends on you know if you've got a heavy pack. Yeah. Then you know you're kind of a bit you know, compensate. Maybe you're using one pole more than the other. Yeah. And you're kind of leaning a bit more, and you're not stable. Especially as, that, yeah. you know when me and you, are, it's, it's always on the treks that me and you do because yeah. if you have the correct path, which looks relatively easy. And then you see another path just below the correct one that's on a like a 45 degree angle and he's like let's do this one <laughs> so it's like you end up that's walking true, like true. like that um Why not? I've, I've been going to the gym and i don't know what you'd actually call these but i see people using them a lot and i don't know why but i've always been a bit embarrassed because and, th and this this is probably showing my sort of a negative trait to my personality but okay I, i've only ever seen like girls use these machines okay so i was a bit embarrassed about using them well, now, now I don't yeah. care exactly because the benefit and it's the one where I, I'll demonstrate we're using my well, you put your, your your legs in and then you like move your legs ah, out yeah, like yeah. that yeah strength strength yeah, yeah. and then you set the, the machine to go wider and then you, you bring them in like that I used to use those all the time yeah they're yeah, brilliant I don't know why like it's it's stupid really because all the machines are there to be used but yeah. I've just felt a little bit weird going like <laughs> but honestly I've been using that um since before Tupgal right and I haven't had any niggles or anything and i find it both stretches and um 
you know, strengthens. Yeah, see, Karen, adductors and abductors. Oh, so Karen Bardet's here. Hey, how are you doing, Karen? Hope all is well. Yeah, Karen was, uh, she, she, is, is this mean she's back? Because she, she pops up every now and again. She's back. She's, yeah, I think she's back. Um, love Mark EV. Uh, experience is everything. Just took it slow and knew what to expect. Yeah, exactly. It's. I think once you've been to altitude once and you know how to manage your body, it's one of those things you, okay, you still have to think about to a certain extent, but, you know, it's also done you do a lot of things kind of subconsciously mm -hmm. and i think that that counts for a lot of altitude um as we know you know it, the fitness is is important but not as important as the way you manage your hydration the way you look after your body which comes with experience doesn't it mark um but great stuff and it's good as well like dewey's mentioned there uh good morning lads uh, hey dewey i hope all is well uh recently started some flat walks easy stuff on flat trails walking the dog before work whilst wearing a weighted vest 25k fair dues that's, that's a good that's a good amount Mm. My legs feel so much stronger, especially when descending. And, and exactly, Dewey, I mean, you're working on the right stuff there. I mean, you know, I know we've been talking about in the gym, but certainly outside. And, and, and that was one of the things we wanted to talk about, which was, um, you know, wearing excess weight. Because I, at, at altitude, I you feel in. <laughs> it's built in. Like on your back, Dave. <laughs> um, uh, because when you're at altitude, you know, you want to go as light as you can. That There's sometimes where it's just necessary to carry gear. Um, you know, but 25K, it will... There should never be a time we have that amount on your back or altitude, you know, unless, unless you want to carry a lot of rocks. Um, Jerome, not talking about anyone in particular. Mm, you could get a job um, as a porter, maybe. Exactly. You could get a job as a porter, potentially. I mean, I actually think the hardest job is carrying supplies up and down the mountain because yeah. I'd rather carry someone's duffel bag than like <laughs> great bags of rice or something like that. That would be tough, wouldn't it? I mean, some, I mean, it goes to show, doesn't it, that some of these, some of these guys are absolutely amazing. Yeah. In terms of what they can, you know, what they, what they can carry. But Debbie, what, what? That's perfect. I think if anyone, uh, you know, kind of took that on board and thought, actually, if if all I did maybe was once a week was go out of a weighted pack, um, I think over a, you know, a, like a two, three, four month period, you'll start to notice. Mm -hmm. That without that pack and when you're walking on like steep ground or when you're descending it will be a lot easier and um it give you a lot more confidence like you said into not slipping then. and water as well is a good way to weight your pack just yeah. keep hold of your two liter bottles of water fill them up from the tap um or even better a river that way when you pour it back you're not wasting water okay i like that you know i always worry when i recommend people that they fill up water like two liters because a liter of water is a kilo so you get a couple of yeah. those bottles in your pack, and then if it gets too much, you can just pour it away. But every time I say it, I always think, I feel wasteful. So now I'm recommending that people do it from a river. Okay. Does that, does that work? That's fine. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it works. I mean, talking about um, <laughs> hiking and, and training that you can do outside the gym as well, because yes, the gym is important, but I find it so dull. <laughs> it's, it's it's something I, I'm I'm loath to do. You it. prefer to be outside. Than it's so boring, man. And yeah. every I'll be honest, I I do like stairmaster. I mean, I hate it, but I recognise how good it is for my body. Yeah. And I recognise how hard it is to replicate that by just leaving your house. You yeah. have to go on a drive and find a mountain and trek for hours. But I feel like I'm just wasting my time. I'm like I'm like all of this climbing, and I could be on my way up a mountain. That is true. Actually. But outside and one of the things i've got down about um one of the key uh, core uh, exercises is core yeah everyone's talking about core these days the best and healthiest my core has ever been is when i do regular walks yeah. that's it like you can do lots of planking i know i've seen you plank before and stuff like that yeah it's, yeah, but, it's good isn't it Tons honest, everything up. but honestly i do think that when i was walking i think my fittest was probably 2000 and 16 was probably the fittest I've ever okay. been in my life. Yeah. And my core, my lower back and everything felt really strong. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do anything other than regular walking with a rucksack. And it's amazing. <laughs> and I've, I've looked it up. And yeah. uh, apparently they say walking is one of the best things you can do to it strengthen is. your core. It is absolutely amazing. I think because especially if you're on mixed terrain and using a lot of parts of your body, not mm -hmm. just your legs, for balance and stuff like that, it does, you know, you, you're feeling pretty good. I think if anyone comes off a two week trip, um, you know, you're going to base camp or Annapurna, Machu Picchu or Kili or K2 base camp, Island Peak, Mera Peak, whatever trip you're going on, you're going to come back feeling pretty, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, after uh, certainly an altitude because you burn so many calories, it's likely you're decreasing weight. Not all the time. Um, but we always say if you've got it to lose, you'll likely lose it mm. um, because your body will burn that excess, um, you know, quite quickly. When you burn in sort of 3,000, 4,000 calories a day, it's absolutely nuts. But look, you know, with it is interesting, isn't it? Because like spending time in the gym and, and, and this is where it's, you know, each whatever we talk about here, it's 
whatever works for you as well. Um, you know, going to the gym isn't for everyone, you know, every day. Going outside and being in nature and doing that stuff is probably something more excites you. Um, and whatever we talk about here, maybe one of them will work for you. But the fact is you find someone, something that does work. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, they go in the gym. And, and for me, I've always enjoyed being in the gym. And, and especially, you know, a long time ago, I was very close to being a PT. And I always wanted to, I always like to go there and do the, the, the weights rather than the cardio. I used to do the cardio outside of the gym. I used to do, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, playing football for me or, or surfing. You know, I'd be doing cardio outside rather than um you know in in the gym i'd always be weight driven and and that leads me on to another thing as well is that I've done a bit of research and, and and something before actually i went to ever space camp the first time um there's a there's a lot that can be said for pushing um when you're doing weights to failure so mm. you know you know you're in the gym you're doing yeah. you're doing sort of uh, whatever bicep or chest work and sometimes you're right right i want to do three sets of ten um and when you're doing those sets, you, you don't always get to the fatigue level. Yeah. But what I found is, and some, some of the research is actually, your, your, your muscles tend to perform better when you push them to failure. Yeah. So you do it until <clears throat> almost you can't really do any more. And your body, you know, your muscles are, are trying to get that extra oxygen into them uh, because of the lactic buildup. And the more you can do that, apparently it does help with the way your body transports oxygen around your body, which obviously go into a oxygen deprived environment yeah like on a, a high altitude it can assist and especially if you're doing an endurance activity yeah i mean if you're a power lifter yeah and your aim is to lift the heaviest thing you can once mm -hmm. fine but you are dead right and that's how i actually trained on the, the the leg extender yeah so when i'm doing like the leg extensions to strengthen my quads i don't do it on the heaviest weight i can lift because i'll exhaust myself pre you know burning yeah. And then I just go as long, and I don't really count my sets either. I don't really count my, um, I count my sets, but not my reps. I just do them until my leg physically can't lift them anymore. And I've had it rather than walking out the gym, kind of like, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> but uh, I did that yesterday. I was like, I got to, was it 36 and a half minutes? And I'd done about 2,200 steps or something. And I was like, right, well, I need to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely need to sit down because I think about 20 minutes in, I could feel like my shoulder aching. And I was thinking, oh, geez, yeah. what's, what's going on here? Started to creep up my neck, and I was thinking, oh, no. Yeah. It was just because I was hanging on for the other. Talking of fit people, uh, Jambo, Yessi. Um, Yessi's oh, hey, our, Yessi. one of our guides on Kilimanjaro. And I will say, Yessi, one of the fittest and most active people I've yes. ever met. Um, he ran a marathon the day after he got down from Kilimanjaro <laughs> with us. And um, so when, I remember that. When yeah. we were all just looking at cheers and thinking, yeah, that's what I'm going to be for the next 24 hours. <laughs> that man was running a marathon and yeah. I think, yeah. Yes, I can't wait to see you again. I know. Fantastic. But, um, our, our, our trips now, I think we've got our next trips in the middle of January, but um, absolutely fantastic guide. Yes, he's um, been looking after lots of our ever trackers this year. Uh, it's been a busy, busy year. As the Yes, I hope you're enjoying a little bit of a break, hopefully. Um, but I hope uh, you and the family are well, mate. Yeah. Um, strong heart, strong mind. Don't think it. Just do it. Do it. Power to the people. That's it. You'll be proud of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we may have got a couple of words wrong, but essentially I've remembered it. Yes, see, that wasn't far off, right? We still do it, yes, when we want to make it and shout power to the people and stuff uh, yeah. to get ourselves up there. I um, I really like what Simon said. Hey, Simon, how you doing? Um, recently got back to the gym, uh, doing strength training for my legs, particularly, uh, particularly the leg press, leg extender, and then when will you lift your feet to your butt? Um, that's hamstrings, right? Yeah, that's that's a good explanation of that one. I don't know what it's called either. That's the one. I'm sure that's where you lie down on the front and you bring the bring the okay. bring it back. That's uh, hamstrings. I I hate that one. I was going to say my, my hamstrings aren't very good. My left one, it's like snap, crackle, and pop going in there. <laughs> I tell you, it's like I can hear it like all the because of all the scar tissue in wow. there whenever I do it. And I always think, is that? Nope, it hasn't gone yet. <laughs> nope, yet never. That's gone. it, isn't it? Because I, I when I was younger, I, I God, amount of times I pulled my left hamstring. Uh, it was. Yeah, yeah but your hamstring is it's held together by like duct tape. <laughs> I you know? do need to like, strengthen it. It's one of my one of my unfortunate weaknesses. But Andy will be like, you'll you you'll get it at the car one time. You go, yeah, oh, yeah, hamstring's gone. Hamstring is, it's a bugger. But um, it's, it should be do do some more yoga is probably the answer. But um, yeah, avoid the treadmill. Love that. I like the treadmill. Uh, I I'm not a big fan. You put it on incline, not running on it. I mean, I I'm still I, not a big fan. You, you know, put it on incline, and then it's really good for the calves. Yep. Just you're not, you're not having it, you? No, nope, just no, outside. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Dremel, prefer to run outside. Not any treks planned at the moment. Simon, what's going on? 
uh, but got London Marathon and plans to do the National Three Peaks. Well, mate, you know, you, it seems like you're at a really good level in terms of fitness anyway. Um, you know, and it's great because, you know, hopefully other people looking at that and, and seeing what you're doing. Um, you know, I think if you're at that fitness level, you know, you, you can do a lot of the trips that we do. You know, some of them are um, significantly harder than the others. You know, if you do a Mara Peak, for instance, um, Island Peak, anything above 6,000 meters, um, you know, it is significantly harder than, than, than some of the, the lower treks. That's not to say that any of them are easy. <laughs> it just means it's easier than, than some of them. Um, but yeah, definitely some really good stuff going on there. Yeah. Uh, Jerome's asking actually, and, and I suppose um, he mentioned, I think it was earlier on, and I know we've got some other bits to talk about, but I think let's bring this one on anyway. Any useful training tips for us oldies? Jerome, you're not that old. Um, I, I did very little there. training for Killian EBC, but focused on general levels of good health and fitness. Good man. Thoughts? Um, Zimmer. <laughs> um, and, uh, music? Uh, no, actually, you, you're right, because I always like to say I'm old, but I know I'm not. But I think some chickens are coming home to roost for me now, which means that I have to slightly change what I would have done like 20 years ago. Um, and you're right, you know, high impact, aggressive ways of training don't work for everybody because the body is not able to sustain that for long enough to get any benefit before it gives up. Yeah. So, but the best sort of training, I think, is just is to make it just as basic as you need it to be. You yeah. don't need any high flying, crazy exploits. You just need to be able to hike and you need to be able to sort of manage that day after day. So if you're going out regularly for regular walks and that's all you do. Yeah. In my opinion, then you've kind of got the base covered. Some of the strongest and fittest people I know in their fifties and sixties are like Scottish hill walkers. Yeah, they're just you know, out and, out, and uh, exactly, you, yeah. you you won't catch them in a gym. You'll catch yeah. them in a pub having a pint after the walk, <laughs> but you won't catch them in a gym. So I honestly think, yeah, just that. try and remain as flexible and as uh, ambulatory as possible. Wow. Um, Is that from? I don't know. It, 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 just, it just just comes out. Honestly, I feel like. That's pushed about five or ten so more three different words into gone. one. Yeah, but remaining ambulatory as you get older is the best <laughs> thing. So regular stretches, mobility work, yeah. um, body weight exercises. Um, and I think as you get older, the a knack to get your own body weight off the floor is going to become more and more key. But also hiking, yeah. um, cycling, those things are just absolutely key. I think. And I think it, it's really important as well. Like, you know, Jer Jerome hit on a good point there because he feels like he needs to do more because he's maybe, you know, a little bit more mature than others. Um, but actually, Jerome, mate, yeah, like you said, getting out and about and enjoying it, um, you know, being in, in, a, in, in a good level of fitness and, and health is, is probably more important than beasting yourself. That's not to say if you did that, if you went, right, I'm, I'm going to put a, a training plan in place and I've got a target. Because I always think a, a, a big part of training as well is to have a goal. Um, some people are just training for training's sake. They kind of lose that motivation or mm. plateau. And there's no actual goal there, um, you know, and it could be that goal of having a trip to plan for. Say in a year's time, you think, okay, year's time, what, what can I do to make sure I'm in my peak condition um, before getting there? But it doesn't have to be that. It can be like maybe I want to lose, I don't know, three or four kgs. And you're thinking that's my goal, and, and I want to do that, say, in a, in a short period of time, maybe two or three months. Um, I think it's important to have a goal and write mm -hmm. it down and, and make it visible. Stick it on your mirror in the morning when you're brushing your teeth. You know, whatever whatever it works for you, um, because then that goal is something that will be there all the time and, and, and it will drive you forward. And I think whatever age, uh, it's good to have a goal there. Um, something to aim towards, I think, is important because otherwise yeah. you, you kind of just feel like you're drifting a bit, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's a big one. If, I, if all I'm doing is training for myself, <coughs> I'm not yeah. that disciplined that I will... Like my own fitness is, doesn't appear to be a sufficient motivator for me to get out there in all weathers and do what I need to do. Yeah. So I find having someone or something to motivate me yeah. really makes a massive difference. So if I'm going to the gym, I'll go, but it'll be sort of hit and miss. But if I've got a purpose, like the, like the charity event we're doing now, yeah. or if I've got someone lighting a fire under my ass, then I'll go. <laughs> but also my, like mini challenges along the way, I think yeah. help. You know, if you if you sign up for something like the Glencoe Challenge, it's one day in Scotland. It's not a mini challenge, though. It's, 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 it's a proper challenge. I, I was <laughs> comparing it to, like, Killy. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. I, you exactly. Know, it, it's That's one true. day, you know. So I think that it, yeah, or like a park run. You know, if yeah. you, you want to yeah, get yeah. around a park yeah. run, if, you know, if you're not a good runner, I think 5K in half an hour is a very respectable time yeah. for anyone to aim towards. 
And I think, yeah, that's your goal. I'm going to go to the park run every week until I can get around in half an hour. Yeah. And then once you do that, you're like, great. Now I'm going to do a 10K. And I found, at least when I was training for base camp, my first time, that yeah. those were the challenges that kept me going. And that's what I didn't, I didn't even get bored. I didn't know because yeah, exactly, yeah. I was really fit, but I didn't do anything in terms of anything special. Yeah. I had goals. So I wanted to cycle 100 miles. Nice. So you thought, right, so I can do that. First time I tried it, I went from Brecon to Bath, but I bailed at Bristol Temple Meads. I made it 46 miles. Not, you did so well, though. And that was the first attempt. And I was like, this is unbelievable. I was so disappointed. <laughs> but actually, I love that. That Yeah. The fact that I failed at something means the second time I do it, I have that summit or cane attitude. Yeah. And it was the same on Tupcal. I failed the first time. So the second time I went there and it's almost like, I don't know why this just literally popped in my head, but you, know, you talk about failure. And I think sometimes, isn't it, as, as individuals, we kind of not fear of failure, maybe it is, but you, you hate to fail. And I was thinking, you know, those, remember those caretakers in school? Mm. Remember it? And they had that massive ring with all the keys. Yeah. And I'm thinking, imagine you've got that door. And on the on the other on the other side is success. Mm. All it'll take, I mean, you maybe it's got a hundred keys on there. You get it wrong fifty times, but one of them's going to open that door. Yeah, eventually. But you would have failed fifty times. Is that analogy of the week? I don't know. I, I usually it's you. It's usually me. <laughs> it's good. No, you're about right. And actually, something you said earlier, just you know, when you're training, it's an interesting term that we use where we say, you know, go till failure. Yeah. You know, and it's amazing that like we do go to failure. We go until we can't do it anymore. And we have to stop, but we do it because it makes us stronger. You it know, does, yeah. and even on these challenges, the first I, I, I in my lifetime, and this is a while ago. It's not a boast now. I can't do this now, but I was able to run 15 miles. Yeah. I know Brian is now just saying whatever, Dave. <laughs> and I could and I could cycle a, and I could cycle a hundred. Yeah. And the first time I ever ran, I made it half a mile, and I led on my back. And an old lady asked me if I was okay. <laughs> no way, really. And the oh, first mate. time, the first training ride I went out on on my bike, this yeah. is no word of a lie, when I was working in Milton Keynes, and if my bosses are listening, stick it. I got <laughs> half, I got halfway to work, decided I couldn't handle it, turned around, went back and phoned and sick. Really? Because I just, I, and yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. unnecessarily, I felt like I was really dizzy and weird. And so it was, <clears> you know, you did it for health reasons. Really, the, that that yeah. was my first two attempts. But I just thought, oh, I just cracked. Yeah. And, and then look where you were. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing, it? yeah. Right. And, then, well done. and then when I got to base camp the first time, like the, the for me, that was... I don't, I don't know if even reaching the summit would give me the feeling I had when I got to base camp for the first time. Okay. Because it's like my first, reaching my first 5K was a bigger achievement for me than doing the half marathon. Yeah. Because of what it took to get to that 5K... That, that initial yeah. yeah and the first first time i got to base camp it was off the back of 30 odd years of wanting to go to the himalaya and and yeah. see everest and stuff and yeah. it was a culmination of all that getting to the summit it was like a culmination of everything but i've already done so much that i'm proud of so yeah i, I, yeah, I don't know but it's great though isn't it and i know you know we we, we are talking <clears throat> a lot about motivation which is it, it goes hand in hand mm. with anyone that does any form of training um, you know, like just looking at some of the things we, we got written down, Dave, around the things you can do outside the gym. And I think certainly a few years ago, uh, back when we started this during 2020, there were certain things that we could do at home because we had us all we could do was mm -hmm. like, what could we do? We can't, we're not allowed to go to the gym. Um, but now if we do choose to kind of, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do these exercises in house. I know there's, there's a bunch of things like, I know uh, some of the guys have, when we talk about hamstrings, um, has been about yoga and, um, yeah, yoga is something that, you know, is, 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 is not everyone's cup of tea. It certainly takes a little bit to get into. Um, you know, I've been I've certainly been doing it the last few years. Um, and yeah, when when I've got the time and I do it, it you definitely feel like warmed up. And like you said earlier, more supple. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you do feel better. Um, so obviously yoga you can do um, at home. There are other things as well, like, um, you know, lunges. Uh, lunges are really good. Obviously, with people with dodgy knees, probably not the best, but mm. you know, it it certainly um, you know helps strengthen those quads and just those. It's something when I um, I used to do a lot of kind of jump lunges, yeah, um, and also as well jump lunges into like and come back and almost like clap, and it and basically it strengthens your back as well as your your, your kind of legs. Um, so lunges are definitely <clears throat> a good one, and and some people do weighted lunges as well. So you could do this at the gym or if you have any weights at home, but you know, imagine. 
you've got kind of two weights and, and you're kind of uh, going into a lunge with the weight ne weights next to your, your knees. Essentially, going down, coming back up. It's really, really good for your core. I think if I did a jump in lunge, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty certain the bolts would fall out of my knee, like Frankenstein's neck. They um, would just fall out. It goes without saying, yeah, that, in terms of don't try this at home. Yeah. Um, I could anything do it, you do try is on you guys. I could do it maybe with my right <laughs> leg forward, yeah, yeah, but my left leg forward. Also, Shelly Nix has said aerial yoga is great. That sounds awesome. Hey, what, Shelley, what is you doing? aerial yoga? Do you, do you suspend yourself on cables, maybe? Do you know what? I want to do yoga, but I'm not interested in the type of yoga we did in Italy. That's silly. Well, it was too hard. Uh, well, Lee's hit the nail on the head. You, it was graft. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, what's that one where you do long, gentle stretches where you hold it for a while? It's also yoga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's got a name, though. And I think instead of just doing like warrior pose and you're thinking and uh, it, there's one which is more it's more relaxed and it, you do this, you hold the stretches for longer. That's the one I want to do. There we go. Evertrek's come up with the answer already. Evertrek has come up it's with Pilates, but I, I'm certain. It, I'm certain it's, it's not Pilates though. I'm sure it's got a uh... bit of yoga and skydiving. Mad, brilliant. It's <laughs> just reading some of the comments. Tai Chi is awesome. Why not? Martial arts is absolutely fantastic. So you make that. I felt. The Did you feel there. that power then? Did felt yeah. the power. It's um, still reverberating around this. Yin yoga. Yin yoga. Okay. Yin yoga. Evertrek got it on the second We're one. Gonna have to, gonna have to try this stuff. You're writing this down. I'm going to write Yin Yoga. Someone recommended it to me. Do you want to know who it was? It oh. was, um, oh my God, my brain's gone blank. Amazing guy, Irish guy, Tukal. Keith. Keith. It's Keith. <laughs> Keith told me about Yin Yoga. <laughs> Irish guy. Oh, Kung yeah. Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> Irish guy, Tukal. <laughs> that's, that's where I got it. Brilliant. But um, no, no Keith, guy, Keith, Keith. You know, Keith's amazing. And um, yeah, he's kept himself in like remarkable condition. And he's uh, he was telling me Yin Yoga is the one that he does. Because uh, it's not right. so intense. You know what? I think, yeah, well, maybe Kate mentioned that as well. Yeah. On, so the, on the two. I'm going to look up Yin Yoga lessons. Maybe there's some around the Philly. Yeah, have a little look. Um, Heather, how you doing? Good to see you on the live. Um, uh, second that, I've been doing, uh, is it Chen Taji? Over 12 months, flexibility and quads have improved significantly. I mean, there's so many things out there, aren't there, that, that can, um, I know swimming has been mentioned a few times, you know, about certainly improving um, you know, lung capacity and, um you know, I've, I've always been a firm believer that, you know, getting out into the water and doing some sort of exercise, like I used to surf all the time. Um, I, I, honestly, my asthma always used to be better after surfing. And, and you know, I know it's different, but you're obviously in the water. Mm. Hopefully, you're not spending too much of the water, rather on the board, but it's a good workout. Um, and what? the same with swimming. Did you say surfing? Mm. Uh, no, it's, uh, the same as swimming in terms of the cardiovascular side of it. Surfing's the hardest thing I've ever done. Well, yeah, like to try not to drown, right? But it, yeah, but draining is made slower because you attach a float to your leg. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, do you know what? Do you want to know something strange? I forgot to tell you okay. about this. A little diversion. Okay. I had a dream the other night that you taught me to surf. No way. And I and we were surfing. Maybe that's like a future thing. Maybe you can. You taught me to ski. Exactly. Maybe you could teach, I don't know though. If you I, teach I, you to surf. Honestly, I don't think I can surf. Like I've never been. Anyone good at, can do. It. I, I've never been good at board sports. Anyone can do anything. I can't snowboard. That's true. I had a lot of help from snowboarding, and I, I can't do it. We'll see. I reckon I can get you. I, mean, I get you to stand up on a board. It's a myth. Good. Anything until we see someone <laughs> snowboarding, that's just falling with style. See, see <laughs> Brian Bry's got a, a, an alternative way um, to exercise your biceps, which is if you alternate your hands that you lift your beer with, that's a great workout by the end of the night. Yeah, I, 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 I get these beers. I with. don't know how Bry still alive still yeah. well i do because he's a marathon runner <laughs> that's true and he towed a sledge recently how did that I go know, yeah, congratulations i mean well I, every time i see it i'm always amazed it's happening because it in my mind it's, it's like it's, to london yeah it's much absolutely amazing every time he says it i in my mind i've got this like really light cardboard sleigh sledge. Uh, i know it looks sledge, it looks sleigh sleigh you know, it's, santa's got a sleigh right he hasn't got a sledge he hasn't got a sledge is he it's a sleigh or sleigh bells yeah it's not sledge bells sledge bells <laughs> Sledge person. Sledge. Yeah. That's yeah, the difference. Fair. Well, we're going off piece here. Yeah, no, true, true, true. <laughs> um, so right, and any any questions as well, do, do drop them in uh, around anything here. There's some great comments. Um, Steins, yes, Lee, you are 100 percent right. They would be very, very good. Love a Stein. With the one, do bicep pills with I, I've got a really awesome Stein, a friend from Germany gave me. It's got a little lid. So you got a really? to drink in. Oh, that lid. sounds amazing. Yeah. See, and you can rehydrate at the same time. He knows it. He knows it. 
<laughs> um, so I'm just uh, hammocks from the ceiling, which makes you balance harder with many micro. Oh, can you imagine? Are you on the hammock and you got like? That sounds amazing. No, I, I think that's advanced for me. I, I think well, you, you exactly. learn quickly, otherwise you'll fall off. True, but imagine all the little micro twitches you've got to do to stay up. Someone said one time a core exercise they gave me, and this is really good for mm. core if you if your core's not completely shot like mine. Yeah, which is do shoulder press but sit on a ball. That you know what that that is that is really really and good that, that's really yeah. good for you. But um, a bit again, I I was so embarrassed because I had to get these tiny little green yeah. weights. That, but because that green was, that was what, they were green, they were little green ones. Okay, what aliens? No, but you know, you've got the proper big black weights that people use, like yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Arnie, and then right at the very end, you've got these little ones that you use. I think they use them whilst they're doing like keep fit okay. classes. Well, that's, that's the ones that I've got. Um, I'm gonna swim back to uh, <laughs> swim back to some <laughs> of the, the gym stuff, the, the yeah. fitness stuff. Um, something is touched on actually, and I, and I know we've talked about this over the last couple of years. Um, but I always think, let's bring it back, um, is actually the cold water therapy. Mm -hmm. Something that, um, you know, I've been, I, I've been doing for, for a long time, especially the last few years, more so the last kind of 18 months, really. Um, and I know a few people have mentioned it as well. And it's something I think Lee mentioned it, do ice baths. Mm -hmm. And it's something that if you can build into your training, it will help them speed up your recovery. Um, and, and certainly, I've, you know, for, from you know, what I've heard, uh, you know, obviously, as you get a little bit older, you know, it takes a little bit longer to recover for your legs. Um, but helping and assisting your training with some, you know, doing the ice bath stuff, yeah, um, or cold showers, whatever it is, you know, it will, it, it, it's scientifically proven to help you. Um, obviously, there's a lot of stuff out there, you know, a lot of you obviously have heard of Vimov. Um, there are other people that do it as well. He's obviously the most famous. Um, uh, and there's lots and lots of books out there, absolutely fantastic. But there's there's a lot of evidence that you know it does help your body, yeah. it does help your immune system, it does help a lot of things, mindset, um, you know, focus, motivation. It's, it's so good. I, I love it. I hear it's addictive. Um, yes. Apparently, I was looking it up, and you've been trying to get me to do it for so long, and it's it's so hard mentally to get started. <laughs> um, you do. I, you I do, do have those voices. I, it, it, I'm never going to do it in the shower. It just won't happen. Really? I can't bring myself to do it. I dare you? But I would. I, I can't happen. I can't. I physically <laughs> can't do it. But if if it's like getting into a river or a lake, then I will do it because it feels yeah. more fun. But um, yeah, I heard you only got to do it for three minutes. Any longer than three minutes, apparently, and it's just an endurance effort. But three minutes is enough to get the physiological changes that yes. your body needs. One thing I will say for it is I've read two things that, you know, that seem to be absolutely true. Yeah. One is that putting your body periodically through the cold water therapy is stressful for the body. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that's really good in terms of your um, helping people with like, uh, with their mental health. Mm -hmm. So stressing the body in a controlled way. Right. Um, is an, uh, on a regular basis helps people who cope with anxiety okay. and uh, and certain other issues and apparently that's true. Yeah. Um, and the second one is the immune system and I can put that down to the fact that I've been dying the last week. <laughs> that's true. Jen's been dying. Mm. The three of us spend more time in a room together than <laughs> anyone else. And most you went. You said one day. <sighs> <laughs> and then the next day nothing and the that's only, true, the only thing i can think of is it's the, it's the, it's the cold water therapy yeah i mean it's this there's so many things with immune system isn't it obviously genetics and diet there's so many things but you're right i i, I suppose if we're looking at common things that each of us do or don't do mm. uh, it's certainly the cold shower thing does certainly helps me um and it has for a long time it's absolutely brilliant i think when we had des um on the podcast uh, des lally who, who, who runs um, and as part of the group, Penavan Plungers. Mm -hmm. um, he does a lot of charity, um, and uh, especially in the Brecon Beacons as well, Banner Brookingo. Uh, and he climbed Penavan uh, every day for a whole year, um, which is absolutely amazing to, to raise money for charity. Do, do you have to say it twice every time now? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, <laughs> you, well, um, yeah, yeah, you do. Brecon Beacon, Banner Brookingo. <laughs> well, just, just in case you don't yeah, know the well, 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 they have adopted it now, haven't they? It's, 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 it's called Grand Banner Brookingo, but I, I think a lot of people wouldn't know that. On, on the live side. Yeah. Say do, you, do you do the Snowden twice now? Uh, 80, yeah. Uh, no, what? I don't actually. What? Uh, 80 is what it's called, yeah. Uh, uh, 80, it means um, that's, that's Snowden yeah, National Park. Uh, Oitha is actually the name for Oitha, that's it. Oitha, that's, that's the peak. That's the peak, yeah. Yeah. That's Matt Snowden. Right. 
um or snowden i like it now because i've noticed it they do it you do it and i noticed it, it was on the news once or twice and everyone goes and oh, no, no the brecon beacons but i know yeah no, i like it how it how it kind of um and obviously i know not everyone on the live is from wales um but i think any country that wants to preserve a language and and do things like that it's important well the so, english have got it easy haven't they <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. I'm going to learn a second language. <laughs> I, I'm I'm an embarrassment to Wales. I don't even know the Welsh yeah. national anthem. I know. I think that's terrible. I only know the one. How I only you? know one word. But you are half Scottish. So okay. I'm half Scottish. I know the Scottish one half by yeah. heart. Not in Gaelic. No, we don't. We don't need to. Don't need it. It's fine. Sounds sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you say it. Um, but no, going back to to kind of um, just buy a nice bath. The shower is grim. I know. I know. I do. I did the shower this morning. I agree with A couple Lee. of minutes. It's fine. I agree with him. It's too much. Do you know how many times I've had my hand on the dial? And I don't know what it is, but it's uh, there's no connection to my brain. So it won't, I physically can't do it. I don't know how you do it. It's I've uh, heard you do it. Yeah, so well, <laughs> even though I, I'm I, I go into it um on purpose, it doesn't mean that um it's it's pain it's painless. But uh, you know, I, I suppose it gets to the point where you enjoy it. You enjoy that. It's kind of like ah, you know, that kind of yeah. wakes you up. It's better than better than any coffee in the morning. Even though I do also have a coffee. Mm. Um, but a exactly, it's the fear. It's on, what's on the other side of fear. Forget everything and remember fear for every reason. <laughs> um, but look, just want to go back. And I know we talked about what Des was doing there for charity. But I just want to swing it back to um, obviously Brecon Mountain Rescue again today. Um, and that's uh, obviously we've got the link at the bottom of the screen, um, and hopefully the link will drop into the comments again as well. Um, I know a lot of you have donated, but um, obviously we do this uh, once a year regarding donations. And I, and I know it's hard because you know we've been out to the Evertrek community a lot this year, um, especially with what happened with Morocco, and that was absolutely amazing. And thanks so much for supporting us there. And, and as we move towards Christmas. Um, we obviously wanted to do something um, to a charity here in the UK as well. So, yeah, um, any any donations would be fantastic. Um, and don't forget, the more you donate, the more pain we have to go through, um, yeah. which is, you know, it's worth it, right? <laughs> um, you know, maybe we'll get some videos and we can show you uh, what 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 kind of, you know, how the pain is for everyone as we're on these, uh, these stair I think you took one yesterday, didn't you? Uh, I did, actually. I yeah. posted that. Yeah, well, definitely. I think it's last year was great, though, because... As bad as the river was, it was 15 minutes. This is this is like death by a thousand <laughs> cuts. You know, it's like it's, it's many half an hour sessions on yeah. the stairmaster. Yeah. What annoys me is that some of the, the younger, fitter people can do yeah. what I do. They do in 21 minutes, and it takes me 30 minutes. Yeah. So arguably, I'm working harder than them. That's true. That yeah. is true. Uh, yeah, and Kara makes a good point as well. I mean, it's, this is it's, it's so hard, isn't it? There's so many like worthwhile charities out there, and um, like yeah, Brecon Mountain Rescue is, is is obviously only one of many, um, you know, mountain rescues out there. And and they, I mean, I suppose for us, it's it's more of um, because we chose to support them this year, especially with their new headquarters. Um, you know, that that's our kind of um, that's our focus this year. But Karen, yeah, you're more than right. Like, there's so many wonderful mountain rescues out there, and mm. you know, I've been out in the Cairngorms. And Wales is the best, though. <laughs> is it? Yeah, no, Wales is the best actually. So. <laughs> I do understand that it's difficult if you want to donate to all of them, and yet that's not feasible. So then you just got to donate to the best one, and that is Wales. <laughs> and I think that um, the uh, the Brecon Beacons Banai Brecon Yog is well um, is our local mount. So um, they do a lot to protect not just us, but uh, Ever Trekkers when we're out there doing our training weekends and things like that. Um, and and again, they they are the best. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Dave um, comment on that. Stand one. by it. <laughs> uh, but no, any donations, fantastic, and and thank you so so much. Um, well, look, as we're we kind of round off <clears> the training <throat> stuff now, dear, I think coming towards the end. Any any last minute questions? Throw them in as well, because um, I feel like we're coming towards the end of today's uh, Q and A. Um, but with fitness, I think whether you're doing it at home, whether you're doing it, you know, outside in the gym, um, just remember, just find whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. um, you don't you don't have to beast yourself, as as Marky V said. You, there are opportunities where you can go, you know, if you feel like you're a good, you're, you're fit anyway, and you can go on a trip and, you know, you, you feel fine and you, and you, you, you will be fine. But, you know, we, we, there's obviously the flip side to that as well, where, you know, the more you will do and the more you can do, sorry, is, 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 is the better time you, you will have mm -hmm. and the easier it will be. Um, obviously, you've got to do the same things or altitude uh, to keep your body in a good place. 
Um, but certainly, yeah, that whatever you do outside and doing something's better than doing nothing overall, I'd say. Um, you know, just to keep your your body kind of ticking over. And yeah. Some people, you know, and it, and it's it's been a thing that that we've done is, um, you can get fit on a trek. You know, the first couple of days are hard, then you build yourself up to it. Yeah. But it's just a damn lot easier if you can get some uh, get some reps in before, um, you know, and doing and some treks. One thing as well, I guess we haven't touched on is the um, and uh, Lee Wyatt's comment just reminded me of it there about yeah, going yeah. full throttle all the time. Is you don't want to yeah. arrive at a challenge and a, an adventure or trip overtrained. You know, if you're not used to sort of putting in David Goggins levels of sort of effort every single day, yeah, you can overtrain yourself, which means that you arrive not at full capacity, meaning your body is in some sort of like long term recovery mode yeah. because it's been put through hell for weeks and months. And um, all major athletes before they do a uh, competition um we'll have a taper in you know all boxers yeah, athletes important. even athletics and things like that before they arrive at the olympics they won't be yeah. going for world records the week before you know you've got to make sure that you're absolutely as peak trained as you can yeah. but then have that taper in and i do think it helps the trick is not to taper six months before the trip um because i have started tapering <laughs> off my training six months before and then you arrive you know exactly feeling like a damn squib but um <laughs> Yeah, it is one thing to factor in as well that, you know, to build up slowly, to do it gradually. You're not out there to win any medals. You're out there to have an, an experience. And if the best way to have that experience is to start slow, train gradually, and arrive fit, then, yeah. yeah. Nice, Dave. Nice. I like it. Well, mate, any, any other final thoughts before we switch? Um, no. I mean, any questions anyone has about training then do drop us a message. Yeah. Um, I guess my final thought is, again, to hammer on the, um, the donations. Yeah. Um, it does really mean a lot to the local area. Um, they don't just, yeah. you know, save hikers that have got lost and stuff like that. They look after so many more people, yeah. um, you know, the local community. And, um, you know, there was one, um, an old chap in Brecon who I think had Alzheimer's that got lost with his dog. Um, yeah. No one else could find him until Brecon Mate and Rescue got involved and they found him. Um, so they do a lot, not just for the people on the mountains, but for yeah. the local communities as well. Um, yeah, so it would be amazing if you could spare anything. If you can't spare anything, then maybe you could spare a share or a like and help us yeah. spread awareness of it. But um, yeah, that's it. Great stuff. Well, thanks very much, everyone. Have an awesome time, um, whatever you're up to this week. Uh, we're back next week. Uh, how much that. do we donate to get you guys a 20 gauge? Don't be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Lee wants to see it. He's, he's done that before, so he's thinking, if i got to do it, they've got to do yeah, it. Yeah, all, but, um, all may maybe, maybe we'll do that next year, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, have a wonderful weekend. Um, sorry, weekend, weekend. And uh, you know, we're back next Tuesday, um, which we'll be talking all about because our last one before Christmas. Um, so make sure you're there. Um, I'm sure there'll be some mulled wine flowing or something like that. Um, certainly, uh, as we as we uh, talk about Christmas and stocking fillers and some of the things we always do. If you've been on any of our Christmas um, our Christmas lives, you you may remember um, this is our fourth one, third one, something like that. I can't remember now; it's been mm. too long. It's the third year <laughs> um, of doing these. But um, yeah, have an awesome week, and we will see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye.